Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I am here in the Astro Garden today. And what I want to do in this video is just a quick video really, just to give you an overview of Star Trackers. I've actually got my Star Tracker here set up behind me and I haven't had it out for ages and I really want to get out and use it again on the night sky. Now a star tracker or a portable star tracker in this case is a device that you can connect to your tripod and put your camera on the top as I have done here and they enable you to get amazing pictures of the Milky Way because they enable you to use long exposures and they do away with that rotation of the earth that makes all the stars trail and that's what these trackers enable you to do and if you use a long lens like I've got here you can get right in on those amazing objects like the Orion Nebula and you can get amazing pictures like the one I'm just going to show you now I took this it must have been about two years ago since I took this picture I'll put a link to the video in the description this photograph of the Orion Nebula was taken with a very similar lens to what I've got there a 300 millimeter lens on the tracking mount there and that just shows you what you can do with a tracker so let's take a closer look at the tracker that I've got there's plenty of these on the market the one I've got is a 4 Nats light track too so let's take a closer look at it and see how it works Okay, so here we have the tracker here, the Four Nights Light Track 2. It's set up on the tripod here and it's got the polar scope as well. This is very important. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So the way that this works is, you see this arm here, this silver arm here, this moves. Can you see how it moves like that? Well, this is the way you set the thing up. Now, um, there's a few things on here as well. I'll, I'll only talk about this one here which is sidereal or sidereal that's the speed of the stars through the sky so as the earth moves the stars move at a certain rate and it's called the sidereal rate and that's what we have the tracker set up on i won't go into all these other modes but this is the one that i normally use for tracking the sky and there's also north and south depending on which hemisphere you're in so we're in the north so that's lit up for north so we need to set the tracker up so that it, it can then start to track the sky so we have to swing the arm out all the way this way towards the right if you're in the southern hemisphere you'd move it this way and it would track the other way because the stars move the opposite way in the southern hemisphere so once we've moved it all the way out here it will then take around two hours before it gets to this side and then you have to reset it that's one of the minor faults about this mount that it does need to be reset after two hours so you can't do all night tracking with this mount you can do with some of the other ones so once that's all the way to that side it will then very slowly start to move you can't see it. it's actually moving right now there's a little light up in there that's flashing that's telling us that this thing now the tracker is now tracking the sky and it will move the camera can you see it will move the camera very slowly and it will follow the stars now this is the polar scope and this is quite important especially if you're using a a long lens like I've got on here I've got a 300 millimeter lens or you could even be using a telescope it's very important that this polar scope here points straight towards the North Star now it's not quite as simple as putting the North Star right inside the center of the polar scope because the North Star is not directly above the pole it makes a little circle itself so you have to have it at a certain point on a circle within the polar scope and the best way to find out where the north star should be on the circle is to use an app i'll just show you a picture on the screen of an app now which shows you whereabouts on the circle at a given time time of night or time of year where the north star should be on that circle and it's more particular if you are using a long lens if you if you're only tracking the milky way if say you want to do one of those long exposures of the milky way to get more detail in the milky way and you want to do minute two minute exposures whatever and you want to stack them together you don't even really need a polar scope you could probably take that off there and just look through the hole in the in this thing here and and just make sure the north star's there and that would be good enough i would say that would be good enough for anything up to about a maybe a 50 millimeter lens you might be able to get away with it but any longer than that and you're looking at having to polar align properly now i've also got this here this cable release here which is quite important because you don't really want to be touching the camera while you're you're doing your exposure so you really want a cable release as well notice how i've got the tracker i don't know if you can see but i've also got it on this geared head i'll just show you the geared head and how that works 
Okay, now I was just talking about the uh, the polar scope. You have to have this aligned with the North Star. So how do you do that? Well, the way that you do it is you have the mount on a wedge or as I've got it here on a normal camera geared head. This is a geared head. And for me, this is the easiest way that I can align the mount with the North Star. And you just use these knobs here. And can you see, this is, there's a very rough scale on that. In fact, that's useless because it doesn't really have the, the proper degrees. But you might have a scale on here that tells you roughly what the degrees are that the mount is on. And were it, um, if it was if it was right, this scale, I don't think it's the right way around this, to be, to, to be quite honest. I would have that at 53 degrees because that's my latitude. So you would set your you would set the angle to 53 degrees if that's your latitude. But unfortunately, this one is all it's all messed up, so I can't really do that. So I would say that the North Star is around about 50 degrees up. So we'd want the, the amount to look something like I would probably say something like that. And then you look through there and, and if you're facing towards the North Star, hopefully you will see the North Star in there and you will be able to line it up with the North Star. And that's how I get the mount lined up with the North Star. So there you go, once this is set up and once this is facing towards the North Star, you've got your mount all set up. We can then swing the arm all the way out and you can then, can you see how I've got the camera on top of a ball head on top of the tracker? So I've got a geared head down here to get the mount aligned because the geared head allows for that precise movement to be able to get it aligned. You could use a ball head, but you'd have a gr great difficulty in aligning it using a ball head because a ball head is very, as soon as you loosen the ball head, everything kind of swings all over the place. So you've got to be very careful. So we've got the geared head on top of the tripod. We've got the tracker on top of the geared head. And then on top of the geared head, we've got this ball head and this allows us to move the camera around. Can you see? So, so let's say you want to shoot the Orion Nebula and the Orion Nebula is over there. Well. You just simply swing the camera around, point it up there, find the Orion Nebula. I've done a video on this, by the way. And there you go, you line it up, and then you're away. You can then shoot the Orion Nebula. And that's all you have to do. It doesn't matter where you point the camera. It doesn't matter where you point it, whether you point it that way or whether you point it back this way. It will track the night sky as long as you have it all lined up perfectly through the polar scope. So there you go. So there you go, that was my quick overview of the Four Nights Light Track 2 tracker. That's the tracker that I use now. There are loads of these trackers on the market. Since it first started coming out about 15 years ago, the portable ones, I started with an Astro Track back in the olden days. It's more than 10 years ago, the olden days, yeah, I know. But yeah, there's so many more on the market now. There's the Move Shoot Move, there's the Star Adventurer, there's all those trackers. are cheaper than this one as well, a little bit cheaper as well. So this is quite a, this one of the more expensive ones and, and I think it's the most accurate as well for, for its time. So there you go, I hope you like this video and it helps you a little bit to understand a little bit about how star trackers work and if you do like the video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and i will see you again on the next one